Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how a six-sided sphere works. Now the interesting thing about these six-sided dice that are used in a lot of games is that they don't have to look like a box all the time. They don't have to be squares like this. For example, here's a pair of six-sided dice that are completely fair that are called skew dice. And you can see that they're not square at all. But you can roll them like normal dice and they're completely fair. The shapes of these dice are called asymmetric trigonal trapezohedrons. And the pair here are actually mirror images of each other. Every face of these is exactly the same width as the other face. And so they have the same probability of landing on any face. So if you can make six-sided dice that aren't actually cubes anymore, could you actually make six-sided dice that aren't cubes at all, but are actually spheres? For example, I have a ping pong ball here and I have it labeled one through six on here. So let's see if I can use this as my die here. Okay, here we go. Nope. The first problem is before I can even land on a number, it rolls off the table. Now let's move to a table that has a bit more friction to it and see what we can get. Okay, it's gonna stop. And it didn't land on any number, it landed on Franklin. So the chances of it actually stopping on a number one through six are pretty slim. That's because on a perfect sphere, the number of equilibrium points are infinite. So if you had infinitely small points on this sphere here, your chance of rolling that point is zero. So if you want to make a spherical die that actually lands on a number one through six, so it's only a six sided die, but it's a sphere, then you need to do something a little bit clever. We need to have the inside have a corner that relates to these six numbers on here. So that needs to be an octahedron. Now an octahedron is a polyhedron that has eight faces and it has six vertices. So if you look at the shape here, you can see that there are six corners. For example, if you just take a sphere and then inside of that sphere, you make an octahedron like this. And then inside of the sphere, you put a weight so on each of the corners of the octahedron, which is six of the corners, that weight can fall in there and it can weigh down a specific area in there. So then you can roll it and it lands on one specific side. Now you have a fair die. And you can turn these six-sided spheres into actually fair die. Five and a three. What's interesting about all three of these dice here is all three of these are fair dice, but that doesn't mean they're equally fair. And the reason has to do with the vagueness of the term fair. What does it actually mean to be a fair dice? Well, in practice, it means that when we roll the die, we want any one of these sides to have the same probability of landing face up. Well, th if these were tossed in a perfectly random manner, then with both of these die, we would have the same probability of any of the sides landing face up. So the fairness of each of these dice has to do with how well you could actually try to manipulate it so that they're not fair when you toss it. For example, you could have a completely fair coin, but re get really good at flipping it so that it always lands on heads if you do a small flip. In fact, they've made coin flipping robots that always land the same direction and do the exact same number of spins. So depending on the specific symmetries of the dice, they could get easier to manipulate in the toss, even though they're completely fair die technically. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you like this video. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing and also you can hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.